We're going through challenging times, but we know music has an incredible capacity to unite us. Music helps us grow, learn about ourselves, and connect with others. Music also helps open doors to a more inclusive tomorrow and amplify voices that aren't always heard. That's why we support Canadian music with a focus through the TD Ready commitment on arts and cultural experiences that bring people together and break down barriers, even when we're apart. Hello, how's everybody? <laughs> ah. People, people in one place. <laughs> I'm very overwhelmed, as I'm sure you are. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Juliet Dunn, and I know most of you, which is so um, overwhelming and exciting at the same time. Uh, we're the TD Niagara Jazz Festival. For those of you who don't know, this is being, well, live streamed. Um, not right this second, but um, as part of the Canadian Online Jazz Festival, so we're really, really excited for that. And we thought, why not have a live audience for this wonderful uh, performance? So thank you for joining us. Um, for those who don't me know me, I'm the executive director, co-creator, and artistic producer of the TD Niagara Jazz Festival going into its ninth season. Nine. Nine. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We have some of our board members here, and let's uh, keep the round of applause going for the board members helping us keep this organization going. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been quite a feat. But before we get into uh, the show, I'd like to recognize the land on which we present this evening, and it's the traditional land of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples, and many of whom live and work here today. But tonight, I'm not emceeing, and I'm quite thankful for that. No offense. I just want to sit back and 
and relax. And uh, I'd like to bring up our lovely MC for the evening. Her name is Crystal DeCuna. She has um, an organization, a company called The Inside View, and you need to check her out. Uh, and she also, uh, she's just an incredible woman who's been working, there she is, working with us for so many years. Put your hands together for Crystal DeCuna. And uh, she, she's amazing, you know. She was going to come as a guest two days ago, and then I said, you know what, I'd rather not MC tonight. Can you be the MC? And right away she's like, yep. I've also asked her to be on our board, so we're going to see if we... We're not <laughs> sure if she can MC and be on the board, so yeah, anyways. <laughs> but we just love Crystal, and then we've been talking about ideas of stuff we'd love to do together, and um, just love this woman so much. So hands together for Crystal DeCuna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Juliet. Thank you for having me again. I'm excited. I am so excited that this is our first live event. Yeah! Live <laughs> event. Are you not excited? Live people in front of us? That is fantastic. Yes. together. That deserves <laughs> a round of applause. Well, as uh, you know, super excited to kind of dive into what we've got going today. Um, but I hear you've got some fun stuff for us planned. Before you go, I, I gotta gotta hear a little bit about that. So so save that for a minute. But uh, super excited about that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we've got we've had some phenomenal talent um, throughout the pandemic. So Juliet, before you kind of take off, I'd love to say thank you uh, for all of the work that the TD Niagara Jazz Festival has really done throughout the pandemic. And many of you I know have attended a lot of those events. Yes, 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 yes. And you know, to keep <laughs> live music alive during all of this uh, has really warmed our hearts. So uh, thank you. A round of applause for you and the Jazz thank Festival. Thank you. And Peter. <laughs> And so as we dive in today, we've got, uh, we've got lots of stuff going on here. Give me one moment. Let me get this organized. So, um, of course, we're thrilled to, to be together with all these live people. But more than anything, I want to hear about uh, the little surprise guests you've got coming for us. So we have, from what I hear, we've got um, Jazz for the Ages, our youth winner. Yeah. Yeah, so, so one of our that. youth uh, winners, one of our programs is Jazz for the Ages, where we engage the youth. We have a competition, and it's a friendly competition, uh, ages 12 and under. And actually, one of our, raise your hand there, Emilio. I didn't know he was coming, so Emilio Jeremia is here this evening. R round of applause for Emilio. He's now in the, he's, he's a three-time winner of our Jazz for the Ages youth competition, uh, 12 and under two times, and now 13 to 17. And this evening, we have one of our 2020 winners, Brennan Parmar, who's in, who was in the 20, 18 to 23 category, saxophone player. So we thought we'd open up the show with Brennan doing a couple of tunes. If you do know any youth that are 23 and under and interested in um, participating in the Jazz Festival, it's a great way to kind of get engaged. And as you can see, the winners get a chance to perform here. Uh, Emilio's performed at the Music of a Charlie Brown Christmas, and he's opened for some of our live streams, and um, we're really thrilled. So should we bring on Brennan Parmar? Absolutely, and absolutely. And I'll let you introduce let him. Let me introduce. So Brennan Parmer, uh, an alto saxophonist, is, up is an up-and-coming performer at the Toronto jazz scene. He's currently studying jazz performance at the University of Toronto, where he has received multiple awards, including the Best Soloist Award in the New York Festival Musical Music Competition, a scholarship to attend Berkeley, and then, of course, the winner of the TD Niagara Jazz Festival competition in 2022. So we're absolutely thrilled to have Brendan with us today. However, he'll also be backed up uh, by one of John Sherwood's dear friends, Randy Sturtzinger, as well. Um, you know, Randy's one of the pillars of jazz here in Niagara, um, and so, so lovely to, to be able to have him on stage as well. Um, and he's a pianist, but also an accomplished vibraphone and bass player. Uh, and so Randy will also be joined with John's incredible band. So Kieran will be joining us as well as Terry Clark. Um, and so tell you, tell you a little bit about Kieran. He's a Toronto-born bassist, and he's been active in the Canadian jazz scene since 1970. Kieran's got four CDs and has participated on up to 80 uh, pr um, other, other musical um, uh, CDs, and he's one of only eight jazz artists selected to represent Canada on the artist box set Here and Now to celebrate Canadian music. 
Let me tell you about Terry Clark. He's had over 300 albums recorded with various artists, and Terry's a familiar face in the jazz scene in concert halls and venues throughout the world. Uh, he's also an enthusiast of jazz and an educator at the Toronto, the University of Toronto music scene. So thank you, gentlemen. We are so excited to have them. Come on up and uh, let's grace our stage with the beautiful sounds of our, of our friends. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. 
What a, what a great performance. Well, we're in for a big treat. We've still got lots more to come. Uh, so thank you so much. Let's put our hands together one more time for a fantastic performance. Thank you so much. All right, my friends. Well, welcome to the TD Niagara Jazz Festival. It has officially started, and we are ready for a fantastic performance. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, and also to you watching online, the Canadian Online Jazz Festival, thank you so much uh, for being here. And we encourage you all to visit our website, so the NiagaraJazzFestival.com, to find out more about the upcoming events that we've got. But today, we're excited to introduce you to our, our fantastic guest today, which is John Sherwood, who will take the stage in just a moment. But as we welcome you to the first official live TD Niagara Jazz Festival event that we've had in a long time, events like today would not not be able to be possible without our sponsors. So I'd like to take a moment to just share with you some of our fantastic sponsors. Of course, um, you know, we welcome back our official 2022 volunteer sponsor, which is McKinnon Employment Lawyers. Um, and events like this certainly would not be possible without their, their help and their community support. Uh, we've also had sponsors and partners like the Humanic Foundation, Jazz AM Co., Jazz FM 91.1, Steinway Piano Gallery Toronto, Winemakers Vintage, Michael Sommer from Royal LePage, and Jennifer Poynton from Desjardins, The Inside View, Maté Café and Lounge, Dispatch Restaurant, and of course, the City of St. Catharines. Without their support, performances like today would not be possible. So certainly thank you, thank you so much for all of our generous sponsors and donors. And as you're watching on, at home or online or in our audience today, please make sure that you go ahead and visit our website uh, to continue to bring you live performances like we're about to share with you today. Uh, donations are always welcome. And we also encourage you to visit us on social media. But don't just visit us, share your experiences with us and connect with us at Jazz Niagara. So we welcome you and we encourage you to continue to stay with us uh, as we bring you live performances um, throughout the rest of the year. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to John Shore Sherwood. Born in Oakville, raised in St. Catharines, John is easily amongst the top pianists in Canada today. He has a strong foundation in classical music and swing. John appears regularly with Peter Appleyard and has also performed and recorded with Mo Kaufman, Rob McConnell, Jake Hanna, Kenny Wheeler, and Butch Miles, just to name a few. John is, of course, today joined by Kieran and Terry, who you met earlier. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming the brilliant and talented John Sherwood Trio.
I can still do up my jacket after. <laughs> Did anybody else gain 20 pounds during the last, like 20 pounds? Do I need this microphone? I do. Who's that back there? Frank Phelan? Who is that? <laughs> Thank you. There, why did we play Point Sienna? How about this warm up? Uh, warm up. How about this excellent band that opened for us? <laughs> Brennan? <laughs> Point Sienna was not written by Ahmed Jamal. Sorry. He made it famous. Like Tony Bennett did not write, you know. Uh, <laughs> Willie Nelson did not write Georgia on my mind. Uh, and, uh, but Poinciano was written by Nat Simon. And I wanted to play it because Ama Jamal's signature, and you can come up and check this afterwards if you want, is inside this piano. This piano was, uh, was in a man's house in Hamilton, uh, a, 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 a guy who liked to have music parties at his house, and he had Ama Jamal come and play at his house. And while Ama Jamal was there, he asked him if he would sign the piano. And he did. And it's, uh, it's here, and it's kind of a neat thing. Um, that the music department purchased this piano uh, from a dealer in Hamilton, and now it's here. But it has a rich history. Um, Ahmad played it. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> I also played Poinciana because I really liked the song. I really liked the arrangement, which was by Ahmad Jamal. Um, and, but now we're going to get back to our regularly scheduled programming, which is who influenced me to play the piano? Why do I want to play the piano instead of, you know, become a doctor or, or do something <laughs> way smarter. Uh, and it was because my father loved music and always went to Toronto and he would go shopping at Sam the Record Man uh, almost every other week. And he would bring, he would go, when you went up the stairs there to the jazz section, there was a new releases uh, area there. And he would always bring home some records by whoever, even if we hadn't heard of them. So the first record he brought home in around 1976 was uh, a record by this next uh, guy called Tete Montolio, who is a Spanish pianist. He lived in Barcelona, and he recorded there. We're going to do a couple of his arrangements for you now. So you can get kind of a taste of where uh, it all kind of comes from for me. So here's a tune by Blossom Deary called Sweet Georgie Fame. By the way... By the way <laughs> and 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 1936. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you for <laughs> completing that. <laughs> I'm <laughs> my, my notes were, were slightly abbreviated there. <laughs> I was so concerned with correcting everybody that Ahmad Jamal didn't write the song uh, that I'd forgotten to include that important information. <laughs> But thank you. And while we're on the topic of composers, there are many people who didn't believe that Blossom Deary wrote anything, that she was just a pretty girl who sang and played the piano. And she played the piano really well. And she sang like a bird. She was an absolutely marvelous entertainer. But as a composer, we're not sure. But uh, on all the records that I have, um, she is credited with composing this next song, Sweet Georgie Fame. Here we go. This will be in the style of Tete Montolio.
Yeah, Tete Montolio, check him out. He came to Toronto a couple of times. Tete came to uh, Toronto a couple of times, played at the Café de Copain. Uh, my friend Randy, who played the piano uh, earlier for Brennan, uh, Randy went to see him. He said it was a real event. Uh, Lothar, who was the proprietor of that place, was a uh, very, very serious guy, very deadpan, and didn't really cut anybody much slack. Uh, if you played there, you were lucky to play there, and uh, you know it was a. But it was a place to hear piano players, and Tete got out of the limousine, and you know with this big long fur coat on, and Lothar went running up the stairs. Uh, I, Randy said, "I've never seen Lothar move so fast in my entire life," uh, to go up there and greet him and and welcome him to that basement club there on uh, L'Esplanade, wasn't it? Uh, Front Street, L'Esplanade, and uh, we saw many great pianists there. Tete also uh, had a, a very interesting style. I think if you look him up on Wikipedia, they describe him as being really from the hard bop era. Um, uh, that doesn't mean that he couldn't play pretty ballads because he played lots of really nice ballads. There's some solo records uh, that you can get that are just absolutely fantastic. Uh, but this, this trio record that I took this material from uh, is kind of hard edged, you know, and. Uh, it's a real contrast to what I became exposed to later and what we're going to share with you a little bit later with Bill Evans, of course, and the great Oscar Peterson, um, who were giants in their, they had their own really, really own sound. But this is still going to be Tay-Tay. It's still a bit edgy. Hope you like this. It's uh, Falling in Love with Love, and uh, it's got a really cool intro and outro by Tay-Tay on this one.
Thank you. Thank you so much. The stylings of Tete Montolio, um, it's not for everybody, but it sure got me going. Uh, when I was 12 or 13, I started really listening to this guy. Uh, and luckily for me, he had some great arrangements and some great ideas. Uh, and he did come to town where you could see him, which was amazing. Uh, the next record to come into our house was Claire Fisher. And it's like, Claire Fisher was one of the most important people in music that you never heard of because he did a lot of behind the scenes work. He was musical director for the High Lows, which was a group like way back in the days of barbershop quartets. Like the High Lows were hugely ahead of their time and their harmony was, was uh, absolutely out of this world. Uh, he went on to write uh, with Gene Perling and continued to do work for the Singers Unlimited and then of course, the groups like Manhattan Transfer and New York Voices came out of all that. But it started with the high lows, and Claire was a, a vocal arranger. Uh, that was his trade for, for one of his many things that he did. But man, he was a heck of a piano player, and he wrote some beautiful music. What was so great about Claire's compositions was they were really advanced, but they were very accessible. Like uh, at the restaurant gig where I play, or I hope to be playing again, I can play this next tune. It's called Pensativa written by Claire, and whenever I typed it on my phone, I was sending uh, texts to the guys, okay, we're going to play Pensativa, and it would always correct it to Pensacola, <laughs> and no matter how many times I typed it, so I had to go in and turn off that feature on my phone, just let me type what I want to say. Pensativa was written by Claire Fisher, and what's so nice about it is, is to the civilians, which we call people who don't play musical instruments, it's not a derogatory term, but people that don't get music or play music, uh, that just like the sound, the noise that it makes, as my friend Warren used to say, they just like the noise that it makes. Uh, it sort of sounds like the girl from Ipanema, you know? It's just like that. It's just so harmless, and it, but it's a really hard piece to play um, because it's harmonically very advanced, but it has a very nice melody. Here's Claire Fisher's Pensativa.
uh, check out Claire Fisher and Friends. Just check it out. It's a concert he does with six vocalists, so it's sort of like Singers Unlimited, and Claire with a big band. And I only can get through one or two selections and then I have to switch it off because there's just so much music in there. But there's a, a, there is a, a moment in there where he plays Pensativa with just the alto, the lead alto player in the band. I forget the gentleman's name. And it's just, well, you just have to listen to it and then switch it off. And then it's just wonderful. Claire Fisher, we've got one more. Do we have one more Claire Fisher tune? Yes, we do. But we're going to come back to Claire because it's time for um, On a Clear Day. And you know whose arrangement we're going to do of this. Uh, some of you were probably at that concert. This is a tune called On a Clear Day. Um, everybody sang it. Barbara, uh, 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 Doris Day, like everybody sang it. Um, but it was written by Burton Lane. I only announced the guys that wrote the music, the guys and gals that wrote the music, because we don't have a singer here. Otherwise, I'd say, you know, Lerner and Lowe, and Rogers and Hart, you follow me, yes? I'm just telling you who wrote the music, because we're just playing the music today. Uh, music by Burton Lane. Here is Oscar's arrangement on, on a clear day. Thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> we're going to do, uh, we're gonna do a, a Peterson composition now, one of my favorite. Oscar wrote a lot of music. I don't know if you are aware of that. Uh, <laughs> not a lot of people, it wasn't Michael Caine that used to say that all the time. Not a lot of people know this. Um, but Oscar was, he, he wrote lots of music, lots of really good music. And we're going to do uh, one now. And then I think we're having a little uh, surprise interview. So just be prepared for that. There's going to be a little, a little break. I was going to say an interruption, but it's not an interruption. We're just going to have a little, just a little break. But you have to stay seated, and, and we're going to have a little Q&A um, with Crystal, I think, after this one. This is Oscar Peterson's Cake Walk.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Terry Clark and Karen Overs. And now I think, uh, I think we're going to invite Crystal. You had a couple of questions you wanted to ask. I did. I did. Thank you so much Thank for sharing you. that with us. That was beautiful. So we've got a, a few questions. You know, I'm, as, as I'm sitting there watching you, uh, the joy and the, uh, the enthusiasm that you're bringing to the table is quite, quite beautiful. But I, I have to ask, so when you first started playing years ago to now, what keeps the enthusiasm so energetic and so full of joy? How do you stay inspired? That's really a good question. Thank you for asking me that. Uh, I think for all of us, I, I, I hope I'm speaking for all of us, the answer is, is pretty much the same. Uh, I always tried to go and listen to other people play music, and it was a lot easier when I was in my teens. I could take a bus to Toronto, and there'd be three or four rooms you could go to and hear uh, you know, the Toronto guys playing music, and always coming home, I mean, I would have, getting home quite late, but just wanting to get to the piano right away while it was still fresh and while the ideas were still fresh. And I remember oftentimes I would ask the bartender, we'd just be drinking Coca-Cola, but ask the bartender <laughs> for a, a cocktail napkin and, a, and I'd bring a pen with me. And I used to jot down titles of songs that they were playing because I had no idea what the repertoire was that you were supposed to be learning as a jazz musician. So I was bringing those little lists home at night and then trying to find, you know, going to the library and finding records and listening to recordings of other people playing. Um, I, I don't think there's any better inspiration uh, for an artist, any artist, uh, than to go and see and hear uh, uh, you know, top-level artists playing. And in those days, I might add uh, that in Toronto, they were bringing in big names. I mean, I saw Zoot, I saw Bill Evans, I saw Paul Desmond uh, at Bourbon Street. We were just talking about, so Chet Baker was at Bourbon Street. Um, the big names would come up and play for like a week sometimes, uh, several days at least, usually with a Toronto rhythm section. So that was always a marvelous inspiration too because you got to see that the guys that I was looking up to, the local guys, were now playing with the really big guys and, and dealing with all that themselves and still uh, you know, managing to get through the week with a, you know, an artist that might have been a little bit demanding. I remember one time it was, uh, it was Sonny Stitt came to Yellow Fingers. Remember Yellow Fingers? Sonny Stitt came to Yellow Fingers and just massacred four rhythm sections. By the time Randy, uh, my buddy Randy, went on the fourth night, he had already gone through all the Toronto guys, and they were bringing in guys from, you know, <laughs> I don't, North Bay, I think. There was, a guy, there was a guy on piano, he looked like a lumberjack, like he had his big plaid, you know, and Sonny was just killing these guys, I mean, because he played so fast, and so, he was very demanding, and, but that was an experience that everybody had to go through. Um, but inspiration, it's endless, and endless. And so now, though, now, during all of this, where we can't, we can't go visit, how have you been staying on top of, I mean, clearly the joy's in there. Clearly it's there. The Actually, I have more joy and more enthusiasm than, I, than I'd have fingers, because, of course, <laughs> none of, I mean, I think Terry still plays three or four times a week uh, out. Uh, I don't know about Kieran, I, I don't go out and play that much, so it's hard to stay in mm -hmm. shape mm -hmm. physically and, and keeping ideas going and keeping the fingers going. But the inspiration, as I mentioned, I just watch. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, concerts, like concerts that were done many years ago that are just now available. You know, you can yeah. see uh, there's so much stuff that's new coming out all the time on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That keeps me going, and it keeps yeah. me going and think, well, gee, there's a song we should learn and, and do with the group. Yeah. So. Uh, I think that is really, really key inspiration, yeah. and it's an excellent that's, question. That's fantastic. Well, you've been sharing a lot of really rich history as you're kind of going through this, who wrote them and who sang them, and I think that's such a big part of the music that so many of us civilians um, don't necessarily know, right, the, the roots and the history of it. And so as you're looking ahead to the next generation, what would you, you know, how would you really tell them to, to stay inspired and really learn about uh, about the background behind the music. I think that's a, an ex another excellent question, and because we we all we all have we've all been influenced by somebody. Some of us have been influenced by more than one person. I was watching an interview with Larry David the other night. There's a lot of really good stuff on YouTube. Larry, after <laughs> you know, after they're in their how many seasons of Curb Your Enthusiasm, and <laughs> asking him these very questions, yeah. who. You know, and oftentimes artists will surprise you. I mean, I consider him to be an artist because he's a brilliant writer and comedian. But he was influenced heavily uh, by by 
by two people. The, the obvious one is Woody Allen. You know, I mean, you can see that and hear it in his tone and in his sarcasm. And, and you know, being a New Yorker where, like, everything bugs you, you know, and Jerry Seinfeld <laughs> kind of inherited that thing of there's so many things that can bug you in New York and it can be, be funny about. Um, but his other one was a surprise to me. He's a big... Uh, uh, um, not Milton Berle, the other, the other one, uh, Bl uh, Blazing Saddles. Um. <laughs> Mel Brooks, he's a huge fan of Mel Brooks, which sort of surprised me. I didn't really see that. It's important to know these things. Um, I used to think, you know, like, it's like asking Terry Clark, or did anybody ever ask you, like, uh, or kind of offend you and say, boy, I'll bet you listened a lot to, uh, you know, Buddy Rich, you know, or something. You know, they'll say dumb things like that to you. Um, <laughs> or they'll say to me, boy, you listen to a lot of uh, 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 somebody who I didn't listen to at all. <laughs> Not because I didn't like them, but, but I just, I was really into Claire and Oscar and, and, um, and Bill Evans, as you're going to see. Um, and it's, it's hard not to be insulted by that. I remember one time someone said to Terry, boy, yeah, you sound like Mel, uh, you really sound like uh, Mel Lewis, man, like so, wow. And Terry's like, oh. <laughs> oh, um, uh, no, I wish you hadn't uh, said that, you know. <laughs> not a big fan, you know. So uh, we all have our influences, and, and, but the inspiration comes from the same place. So I would say to young people, what am I going to say to Brennan? The guy already sounds like Charlie Parker. <laughs> like, I'm just, I forget how old we're getting. Like, I'm 60 <laughs> now, we're 60, 70, 70 something, and we're, there's so many amazing young musicians that are not only talented, but they're really working hard. They're working hard at the repertoire, uh, they're working and they're listening, and all this stuff is available to, to them. I used to have to go to the library and sit in a booth and put earphones on to listen to Bill Evans. Um, you know, you'd go and Borrow, or you could borrow a record and bring it home, and it was usually pretty scratched up and, and not in very good shape. Everybody, we've all done that, right? You borrow the record from the <laughs> library, and then you forget to take it back, and then you, you know, and the guy comes to the door and everything, and it's so embarrassing. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld did one. <laughs> Remember they did that on Seinfeld too. It's hilarious because that happened to me. The guy came right to the door, and he looked a lot like that guy that played the library <laughs> cop. And uh, where's that Bill Evans record? You know, and it's like, oh, geez, I think I loaned it to my friend, and but. Now YouTube is just, it's like such a, an amazing resource. There's even not just audio and video of these amazing performers um, and musicians and concerts that are really well recorded, but uh, there's even, guys are putting up transcriptions. Peter, you've seen these transcriptions of, of like stuff that we wrote out when we were in school, like trying to write out the solo by, you know, like this. No, oh, you guys are no. <laughs> like hours with the tape and trying to figure out what is this guy doing? Uh, and now people are sharing all of that. They're writing it out and sharing it. There's so much out there. I, I guess what I'm saying is there's no excuse. Yeah. There's no excuse, but you gotta work hard. Like Brennan and some of these other young, talented people that Juliet have brought to us, uh, they're really hardworking people. And I, I applaud them for that. Let's do that. Uh, it doesn't just happen. People think, people think that it just happens. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't. It's a lot of hard work and a lot of listening. Um, what else do you what have? What else? What else? So uh, this is a question for all three of my friends. Um, so to, if you were to get in your car today and drive, what would be that one song that you would crank up? And so oh, oh. I guess I'll start with Terry, and then I'll go to Karen, and then John. <laughs> yeah. Terry, what's that one song in your car that you? Surf's up. Surf's up. <laughs> Surf's up, he said. Surf's up. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And carrying yourself? <laughs> love it, love it. <laughs> no, I was thinking Billy Joe's uh, Frank, uh, Dracula. Frank Dracula. Oh, Count Dracula. Dracula. Count Dracula. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's with the season. <laughs> John, how about you? What's your one song? Oh, man. It's like, it, I come in and out of these, we all do. We come out of, in and out of these phases of being really into one thing. And I totally OD'd. I overdosed on Claire Fisher when I was about 17. Uh, like, just headphones on all the time. And just got, actually had to switch it off for a while. Uh, right now, I think I'd put on a big band arrangement of, of um, like, say, the Boss Brass. I would put on the Boss Brass and turn it up really loud. And, and one of those like um, 
uh, like one of those uh, riffs I have known, or probably uh, you took advantage of me, one of those just barn burner arrangements of Rob McConnell's. Just Friends, there Very it is, good. Just Friends. Just Friends, that's a good yeah. one. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. We're excited to hear the rest of your show. Okay, so Crystal, without further you. ado, gonna, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you. Yeah. And through our travels, through my travels, I was very, very lucky to run into the Sturtzinger brothers when I came when I came out of my basement and I'd learned my three songs. You know, I learned this. You know, and I thought, okay, I'm ready. And uh, <laughs> like, there's thousands of songs that you need to learn. And uh, this is one of the ones we learned. This is a Kenny Dorham tune. Kenny wrote this tune called Blue Bossa. And a lot of people uh, play this song, but they don't play all of it. And we're going to play all of it for you. There's a middle part that uh, I really like. And we're just going to give you, like, uh, let's, we're, you know, getting tight on time. So once through, please. Blue Bossa. Kenny Dorham. <laughs> We're going to move along because Bill Evans is so important that we have to do him. We're going to do two Bill Evans tunes for you. Um, this one's one that if you just imagine yourself, you know when you have to get up really early to catch an airplane or something and it's, you know, uh, and it's daylight savings and man, you lost another hour of sleep and the sun is just coming up. This is the image that comes to my mind um, when we play this tune called Very Early.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, you get to, and then you get to the airport. You ever take a taxi to the airport and you're falling asleep in the taxi and then you get there and then the, and then there's the then you get in the lounge and you watching uh, you know all your planes taking off and then you realize that your plane is just taking off as you're looking out the window. <laughs> Those are, you know, but those were the cheap, the days when I traveled a lot, you always tried to get a cheap flight, you know, and they started it, they started it with a first flight to Chicago out of Toronto it was seven o'clock or something. And then there was red eye, remember the red eye from LA would come, we'd sleep, you'd try and get a row where you could sleep across the back of the plane. Oh boy. But every time I hear that piece, I mean, it just makes me think of those days traveling, getting up early in the middle of the night to catch a plane. This is a little bit happier, this one. This is a waltz for Debbie. I'd sure like to know who Debbie was. Because we're going we're gonna to close with this. Because we're way over time. And the, but before we go, I have a couple of thank yous to, to, to make. And you, forgive me, because I made notes. Because it's hard. I know everybody in this place. But I, you know, I'll forget, right? I'll forget to mention somebody. And, uh, and I don't want to do that because there are so many important people that make this happen. Not only at the PAC in Ju with Juliet and Peter. Peter, welcome. Peter's here, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, makes, it just makes me so happy to be playing for, you know, when Peter's listening. I'm always, I always want to play because I know he's going to hear it. <laughs> he's going to hear everything. And... Uh, you know, it's such a wonderful feeling to have so many friends around. Thank you to all the volunteers, Francine and, and, and Jan, everybody that in, in that group. And I've forgotten all of your names, but I know who you are. And, uh, uh, but I want, and Juliet and Peter, of course. Uh, before I thank the band, there are some people here that are important. Our lighting d designer today is Mark Ryder, who is uh, my friend here. Mark Ryder is here. Thank you, Mark. Our sound, now not only the sound that you're listening to, uh, and I was giving him some grief earlier because I forgot to use the microphone because he's also doing the sound that you're going to see later on the streaming. So he's wearing two hats. He's wearing two sets of headphones at the same time, and he's amazing, and I'm really glad that we were able to get him today. Uh, that's Paul Vida is doing sound. Paul, thank you. And uh, Kyle Green is doing our video. You saw these cameras. They're very very cleverly positioned here. This is going to be a nice video. And Kyle is our videographer who is doing that, streaming that off. Our, our, our main uh, guy here, supervisor, tech supervisor who gets everything done is Rob Nichols. Thank you, Rob. Uh, and Jen Hunt, who is our hospitality coordinator and overseeing uh, the, the safety and happiness of everyone here. That's Jen Hunt. And of course, the, the NJF, uh, TD Niagara Jazz. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Terry Clark. Uh, thank you, Kieran Overs. Um, we're just so glad to be here uh, playing for you. Here is Waltz for Debbie. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to say it's, it's such an honor to play with these musicians. Uh, like I, the first time I met Terry was on a Peter Appleyard gig. Terry had just come back from New York, and I was so scared of him that I didn't say anything to him all night. And for about a couple of years, he thought I didn't like him because <laughs> I was so intimidated uh, because he'd done all the things that he'd done and worked with all the people he had. But he's so easy to play with, and uh, I just want to thank him for making the trip down. Terry, thank you for coming and playing. Wow. If, man, the joke is, if you get, if you want to take a lesson with Terry, it's free, but it's a, it's a hundred dollars to park in his driveway, <laughs> and you can, and then you get, you go down to the basement, and there's a hole in the basement. Have you heard about the hole? It's not in the floor, it's in the ceiling, because it's a low ceiling in the basement, and uh, I forget who the first bass player was that used the hole, but <laughs> there's this hole in the ceiling underneath the dining room. Uh, it doesn't go right through to the dining room, obviously, but that would be a neat idea. We could, it's, a, it's, a, it's for the bass violin because it's so tall. Uh, the guy doesn't want to play like this, so, he has to, so we have a hole in the ceiling. So $100, <laughs> it's worth it to see the, the hole in the ceiling. It's really cool. Um, Karen has an opposite thing where at his house, he's got a, kind of this crawl space. Well, it's not really a crawl space, but it's just like this. And there's a drum set in there. <laughs> And it's set up, like, it's just a, a little bit higher than a drum set. So if you're sitting down in there, you can play. <laughs> and the ceiling is like this. So these guys have the coolest houses, man. You've got to really... So thank you guys for, <laughs> for being here. And sorry for the silliness and all that carrying on. Crystal, did you have something to say? Thank you. <laughs> thank thank you. you so much. It was a fantastic show. We enjoyed it, and it was so nice to get back out again. Uh, and be with our friends online as well as in the house. So thank you so much again. Thank you very much. Thank you, people. Thank you. Our friends, I just wanted to say one final thank you to the TD Niagara Jazz Festival, to, to our sponsors, TD, as well as Canada Online Jazz Festival. For those of you watching at home, thank you for being with us. Thank you for watching. And please make sure you go and visit our website at the NiagaraJazzFestival.com. And yes. so we can continue to bring you performances like this free online. Please go ahead and make a donation, as well as stay connected with us on our social media platforms at Jazz Niagara. And tell us how you enjoyed today. Tell us how you enjoyed our performances that are coming so go ahead and go online and stay connected with us so that's it for us today thank you so much thank and we hope to see you at our next event have a good yeah. night everyone thank you.